I, uh, I realized the other day that the Christian's worst enemy is Jesus Christ. Uh, it is. If Jesus came and walked the earth today and told the truth, they would kill him. The Jews wouldn't have to do it. <laughs> if, the, if Jesus came and said, you must be born again, if he came and reminded people that you cannot sin if you're born again, if he reminded the people that you have to love me with all your heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else, if he said you have to love your neighbor as yourself, they would kill him. They would wipe him out. The, the Christians hate Jesus. They sing about him, they shout about him, but they don't love him. And they have no love. They have no power. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They believe about it, but not in it. There's no love in the Christians. And they will hate Jesus. They would kill him if he came and told the truth. If he came and said to the Christian, I am not God. I am the son of God. My father sent me. Greater works shall you do. Will you do that I've done? They will kill him. You're God. What are you talking about? You're not God. Then get out of here. They will rebuke him. They will beat him up with the Bible. And they will kill him. He is the Christian's worst enemy today. Christians do not believe that you could be saved from sin. They do not believe that you could be born again of God, a clean new spirit which has no sin, and they do not believe that you cannot sin. They don't believe you can live a life on earth and not be angry. They believe anger is of God. Jesus was angry. They'll tell you that all the time. They don't love one another. They have no love. They don't love their enemies, and they don't love themselves. And if Jesus walked the earth, if he was going out Pico right now on a, a loud mic, saying these things, they would go out and beat him up. They don't, the Christians don't believe that once you know God, you have perfect peace, and once you have perfect peace, you don't need to get high. You're already high with perfect love, perfect energy. They don't believe that. Christians don't believe that faith is amazing. It's, if you have no faith, you have nothing. You really don't. It is above all things to have faith, because in faith is everything. And all things are possible. You never doubt. The Christians don't believe. You know, I was thinking about, once this occurred to me, I was thinking about America and that America was founded by white folks. And I wonder, what's the difference between the whites then and the whites now? White people then believed in God. They were real Christians. When they fought battles, when they had to build, when they went through the storms, the ups and the downs, uh, they prayed to God and they had faith that they could do it. Today, white people don't have faith. They don't believe in God. They believe in their stuff. Somewhere down the line, the white folks got too much stuff, and they believe in first-class living, flying first-class, nice neighborhoods. Somewhere down the line, they got too much stuff. They put their faith in their things rather than perfect love. And I'm thinking, wow, that's so interesting because white people of old would be fighting back for their country today. They would be standing up fighting. They would not be hiding behind their stuff or running to different cities and states away from the enemy because they would know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We literally have the power in us to defeat evil, but you can't defeat it with fear. You cannot defeat it with doubt. You must believe in God in order to defeat it. Why people are on the run? They're literally on the run. I remember 30 years ago, they moved up to Oregon, some of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> they moved up to Oregon, right? Because they were saying, California falling apart. You know, it's coming. Get out. Nothing but liberals. And, and a whole bunch of white people and others moved to Oregon. And now Oregon is messed up. The liberals. The liberals went right behind them and took over Oregon. 
to the point that they voted in a drug. You can get high now. The Christians didn't fight back in Oregon. And there are a few left, and they want, I think, they wanted to be a part of Idaho or somebody. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Uh, Nick, I want you to, if you don't mind, come and read off those. Uh, remember that story we did on Friday where those young people were killing themselves uh, due to the shutdown? It was in the last hour on Friday. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I got it. Um, oh, you anybody haven't? doubt me so far, disagree. You disagree? Okay. No, okay. You say that people should. You say that, uh, or you're inferring that people should fight back. Fight. Yes. Um, you have to within yourself. You have to face evil. You can't run from it. You have to take the pain of it. And the children of the lie, they give you, they let you see your relationship with the world by threatening to take something away from you. If you speak up, they say, you are racist. And if you have fear, you're going to think, it's going to click in your mind, you have the fear of it. And rather than the Christians enduring that so they can overcome it and not be, be manipulated by the children of the lie, they give in to it. They run. They believe it. I used to think that white people, 30 years ago, I was told that the reason white people were not speaking up, they had a guilt. They felt a false guilt about what black people were going through. I'm like, no, you still need to speak up. It's not real. But it's not that. It's fear. Okay, so the, perhaps you could give some tips on fighting back without anger. Um, you do what's in front of you to do. You speak up. You get involved. You change the law. You vote people out. You stand, you stand up and not let them take your Second Amendment away from you to protect yourself. They're taking the police departments away. And now they're going to take your guns away, and you can't even protect yourself. And that will happen because the people don't have courage. They don't believe in God. I understand. They have fear. You can't run. You have to overcome. And if you truly believe in God, God, you will not run. Is that it? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. that's fine. Yeah, let me take this first. So here's another example of Jesus being the worst enemy to the Christians. Uh, explain the story first and then tell us. And we were, the one we were talking about the depressed um, young adults? Yeah. Okay. Well, we were talking about on the show uh, that the Journal of Adolescent Health had uh, released a study, and uh, they were talking about an alarming trend of anxiety and depression related to the coronavirus stuff somewhat. They lost their jobs and all that. But some of the stats that they released in the study was like 59% um, of young adults report having lost employment, 75% of them being nervous, 68% of them not being able to stop or control worrying, and 80% of young adults reported significant depressive symptoms. 80% of them drinking alcohol, 30% of those drinking alcohol reported harmful levels of drinking, and drug use as well, with 22% uh, of participants in the study reporting using drugs, and a third of those that the drug use was severe. Amazing. Those children, parents, Christ would be their worst enemy. Because if they were Christian, they wouldn't raise children with fear and doubt and on drugs and worried about a job and all that crap. In Christ, there is no worry. There is no insecurity. There is no doubt. There is no nothing because you know you're one with the Father. You know it without even saying it. You just know. You know, if you had a physical father at home, you know you got a father, right? You don't have to say every day, oh, this is my daddy. <laughs> and your father would take care of you. He's that way. He would take care of you. Christian would kill Jesus today. He is their worst enemy, all in the name of Jesus. They don't believe in what he taught when he walked uh, the earth. They have no faith. White people... Somewhere down the road, decided their stuff means more to them than uh, having faith in God. It's amazing to see it. This is a Judeo-Christian nation. A lot of Christians don't want to hear the word Judeo-Christian nation. They just want to say Christian nation. And that's not true. If it wasn't for Judaism, there would be no Christianity. That's reality. 
But they don't want to hear that, so Christ would be their worst enemy. Um, Black Lives Matter would not be a big deal at all if, if the Christians love God, if they love Christ. But they don't. They don't love God, so they don't love their neighbor as themselves. It reminded me of when I was thinking about the white folks in Christ, but this is not just the white Christians. No Christians believe in God. They're his enemy. Um, I remember, remember the guy in the Bible, he had everything. He was like, he saw Jesus walking down the road. Yeah, the rich young ruler. Right. And so he saw Jesus going down the road to the liquor store. And um, <laughs> Jesus didn't feel like making wine that day. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to stop at the store and get some. And this, this rich guy saw him going down the road. He's like, Jesus, 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 I have everything. I've kept all of your commandments. How can I follow you? I've done everything you want me to do or, or was supposed to do. And Jesus said, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let me, I'll give you an answer when I come back. I'll run to the store and get some wine. And Jesus came back and said, okay, guy, if you want to follow me, give up everything you have and follow me. And the guy walked away like, oh, no, I can't do that. I don't love you that much. And he walked away with his head down. And the guy even said, I, I've kept the commandments and everything. The guy lied about keeping the commandments. He didn't keep the commandments because had he kept the commandments, he would have gladly given up the material stuff and follow Christ. Christians don't give up. They don't keep the commandments. They don't practice them. They don't do them. And I'm talking about a lot of you here, too, so don't be all looking at me. <laughs> huh? No. That's right. I ain't talking about me. But you got to keep the commandments. You got to practice them. Number one, you must love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might, along with nothing else. You can't love him. You can't love your children more than him. You can't love your things more than him, your places that you live or whatever, or even your reputation. White people say, well, I'm not going to speak up because I don't want to be called racist. I'll lose my reputation. Reputation means more than loving God with all the heart, soul, and might. Isn't that amazing? This is not a game we're playing. But yeah, it's not an uptight thing either. You don't walk around, oh, I'm Christian. I'm tough. You just be yourself. And everything that you are addicted to, the world, because we are, we are born in sin, so we have to overcome the world. And so in, while we're in that sin, the world is our God. You know, the things we have, the way people think about us, and all that is like really important because in that fallen state, you're very insecure. You have no love, no, no nothing. So you use people, places, things. But once you wake up, you overcome those things. And the way you know that you have overcome them is if somebody threatens you, if you overreact to it, you worry about it, you become afraid, that thing is more important than the commandments, than God. But if you notice, oh, they threatened to take my stuff. It's too important. Let me go through it. Let me take the pain. And God will call you to overcome this stuff. You can't make yourself overcome it. You just need to see that you are addicted to losing stuff. And he will call you to overcome it. That's what the pain is for, to overcome the world. And you will overcome it, and no one can control you. It's so amazing. As you were saying, he will renew your mind. You see things differently. You relate to people in a different way. It's amazing. Christians hate Jesus, and they don't love God. Because if you hate the Son, you can't love the Father. Oh, amazing. Let me tell you, this young lady, and I think I, oh, and then I saw here, right? And some more hands. What you, I mean, isn't that deep? Yeah. I was round down the road. It just, in my belly, it occurred. Christians hate Jesus. I'm like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is so, it was so clear. 
Some of you right now, if someone says something wrong to you after the meeting is over, you get mad at them, it's done. <laughs> you, the little silent prayers out the window. 